This guy will take on my last guest that I had on the show, Jaden Martin, at Battlefield Fight League 80, May 9th, live on UFC Fight Pass. He is Christian Tremaine, again. Excited to hear this interview since uh, there's a bit of bad blood between these two. Christian, thanks for joining me today, man. Yeah, no problem, man. I don't Appreciate know if you had, the, a, uh, the, the, I don't know if you had a chance to uh, to check out the interview that I did with Jaden. Uh, he he doesn't understand the bad blood, and uh, I don't know if you want to get into that right off the hop or what. But there's obviously some tension between yourself and him, judging from the the social media posts. Uh, he doesn't follow you on social media, but he has been privy to it since some of his friends, I guess, follow you and have sent him screenshots and whatnot. And, you know, he saw something that got taken down. So without, if you don't want to go into that side of it, I understand because you, you know, whatever, but where's the bad blood coming from? Um, okay. Well, there's, there's fighters out there that are willing to fight guys. And then there's fighters out there that take fights that they know they can win. And, um, Aside from Keenan Keller and Bryce Goujon, um, I don't think that he's ever taken a fight that he didn't know that he could win. And in his pro career, his opponent's combined record is something ridiculous, like three and thirty-eight or something like that. And uh, and he's still two and one. So, um, like I say, there's there's guys that are willing to actually fight guys that are there are a challenge. And even with me, I'm a 55er. I have fought at 70. Um, but when we weighed in, he was like 25 pounds, 28 pounds heavier than I was. So um, he can chalk that up to the Letterman jacket that he was wearing. But, uh, yeah, he's he's a bully, and that's that's all there is to it. And that's that's where that bad blood comes from is that he's, you know, he posts on Instagram acts like he's the shit and um i'm just excited to stop the train and yeah he's got a win over chester post and luis guzman and he's talking about the ufc already like buddy fight some formidable guys and that's why i signed up for this even though i'm way lighter than him that's why i have blab bad blood with him so yeah I mean, he did say something about, you know, you bringing third party people into it, not necessarily just talking about him. Uh, you want to touch on that a little bit? Yeah, so I did take that post down about Chris Franco. But um, so I've been a coach many years in my life, coaching, uh, coaching kids. And I, I'm at almost every single jiu-jitsu tournament locally, and I travel internationally for it. And so I stopped it must have been like a nine-year-old match and Chris Franco stormed onto the mats and chest bumped me as I was the ref. And I stopped it because it was a fully extended arm bar. And that's what we do as refs and kid matches. We, we don't let kids get hurt and he stormed onto the mat and it's just bully behavior. And that's exactly what it translates in, into in Jaden Martin's game and how he picks fights. I will say non-biased aside uh as i said to Jaden wholeheartedly that i i'm a fan of both you guys i feel like i'm acquaintances with both you guys if not friends with both you guys since we chat here and there but i will say from from a perspective of knowing chris i know that obviously probably heated in the moment uh as you said you were refing and it was a nine-year-old but i will say that the man is one of the kindest most gentle human beings i know but again heated in the moment so I guess we'll agree to disagree here. Yeah, and honestly, like uh, I, I do have respect for for Franco and what he did for the community, and you know, bringing up local MMA and everything. So he definitely does have a place in in the local scene and everything. And uh, yeah, that's exactly why I took that post down. And uh, yeah, you know, people make mistakes and everything, and so I, I have had a distaste for that school ever since that happened just due to that one, one incident. But, yeah. uh, but yeah, again, if you look at a lot of their fighters records, they fight people that they know they can win. And, you know, that's the type of stuff that gets you to the UFC, but then you get starched in the UFC. And so that's why I think it's hilarious that he's talking about a UFC run when he just beat a guy who's one in five. 
And you, I, I, again, I said to Jaden, I said, you know, you're a workhorse. You're a guy who goes in there and grinds. You're a guy who, and I, I think I, I said this to somebody that I was talking to today that, you know, Jaden's a martial artist. He, he's grown up in this sport his, his entire life. And you're just a guy who likes to fight. <laughs> like you want to get in there and, and you want to grind and you want to fight. And it's like, you like when you get hit and you want to just keep going. And, and you can see that from the guys that you've fought. Uh, you haven't turned anybody down. You've be, only been out of fights because you've put yourself into positions to be out of those fights. If it, Again, if you look at your record. Uh, judging from your record. Now, if we go back, take a step back and, and not talk about this fight in particular. You know, you started out your career. It was sort of back and forth. You then went on a, you know, three fight losing skid. And then you've started to put the pieces back together during that three fight skid. Was there ever a point where you were like, forget this? Um, yeah, obviously. Yeah. There's a lot of points where, you know, you, you ask yourself why you're wasting your time with this. Um, you know, but then I just continued to train and, um, I, uh, I had the opportunity revolution hired me on as a cleaner when I was like pretty young. And, um, that allowed me to train all around the clock. I'd show up, open the gym at seven, close the gym down at nine, go home. And, uh, you know, I'd be able to clean the gym for minimum wage and then go home at the end of the day and have trained two to three times. And that was a huge part of my development as well. And then that led to me winning the amateur title and then me getting out to, uh, Team Quest Thailand there, and that was, like I say, a, a big part of my development, and I will always appreciate that and never forget that. Now, as I said, you went you went on a bit of a skid. You turned things around, but prior to that skid, there was you know a pullout. Johnny Broad was supposed to fight you. That fight never ended up coming to fruition. The kid, you know, turned to karate combat and basically retired from MMA. I don't know whether that was your doing or not, but <laughs> you can take that hat if you want. And then you went on to go on this two fight streak that you're on now. Again, there was a canceled fight uh, that you were supposed to have a title fight uh, out east. Uh, talk about talk to me about this two fight run that you're on and the streak that you're on and, and what sort of made the mindset change and, and the things change for you skill wise to sort of prove yourself and, and be able to beat these guys that again are looking to be a little bit higher caliber than some of the guys you had fought previously that you had actually lost to. Yeah. Um, so I was, I was coaching and, uh, teaching kids, a lot of the hours of the day and I was basically running, running a gym. And so when you're, when you're coaching all day, you know, you're on your feet all day, it's hard. It, it's legitimately hard to, to get those, get those reps in. And yeah, you're surrounded by the, the environment and everything. But uh, I think I was just a little bit too focused on, on the school and not as focused on the, uh, my self development as, as I could have been. And, a lot of the recovery solutions and stuff like that I didn't have because I was lacking finances. And so I decided to go back to iron working. I decided to outsource myself to as many gyms as I could. Um, you know, I've, I've never really had a coach that was willing to take me under his wing and take me as his own. So that that's a big thing where I just said, okay, I'm, I'm going to be my own coach and I'm going to go find the best guys around the city that I can train with all the time. And so, you know, started going to on guard, started going to Kazushi, started going uh, to uh, pit metals combat club. And I like, uh, I'm going to East Van Muay Thai next week. You know, there's, there's, this is, I listened to his interview last night and he was talking about cross training. We don't have to fight guys around the province, all right? We can all we can all be friends, and Battlefield can bring in guys and outsource, right? This is not our responsibility. Our responsibility is to become the best individuals that we can, and that's that's where I am coming from. And so, with with the available finances of me actually just working a job and coming in, and I'm lucky enough that I work a, a job I love, so I'm not exhausted at the end of the day, even though it is very physically demanding. But guys will go to the gym, you know. Climbing columns, doing swinging hammers, the the ironworker culture. Jaden could never. Jaden couldn't even put a week in. I guarantee you, man. Like last week, I worked eighty five hours. Okay, 
and I worked six days a week. We worked a 17 hour shift. Okay. And then the next morning I woke up, I went back to work the next day and then went and weightlifted in the evening. Like this is, this is just what I love to do. This is, I I'm living my passion. I'm, I'm happy doing it. And, uh, yeah, this is something that I think outlines me from the rest of the crowd. And that's, that's what I say. Like my record might be five and four. Yeah, that's fine. But I like, so I fought a guy, uh, Dylan Schellenberg. Yeah. So yeah, his record was one and two at the time. And I took that fight and I was like, oh, okay, you know, he's, you know, a little bit, you know, modest in the game or whatever I'll call it. And so I thought this might be, might be a good, good, easy win. Then all of a sudden COVID hits. So they have to drive and then they go, Hey, we can't make the 165 weight limit anymore. So we're going to have to do 170. And I say, okay. Then they go, Hey, we're not going to make 170. We got to go all the way down through the States. And then, so we, can we do 175? I say, okay. Then they say, Hey, we're still above weight and we're not going to have time to cut weight. Can we do it at 180? I show up on fight night. The guy's fucking 195 pounds and I didn't cut a single pound and I weighed in at 178. Like I fight because I love to. And this is, I'm, I'm willing to take on these challenges where you can look at his record. He has never not been the betting favorite. I am always the underdog. My last fight against Cam Nelson, I was 7% favorite to win. He was 93. Okay. I'm not sure what that translates to in betting odds, but it sure as shit not be in the favorite. Definitely not. And being the out-of-town guy didn't help either, though. No, you know, the, the entire crowd <laughs> was chanting, fuck DC. Yeah, exactly. Now, a few things out of that answer, then. Um, you know, you say you have you worked 85 hours last week. You did a 17-hour day. Um, Jaden says, I hope this guy is training for this fight because I want the best Christian Tremaine. Like, he doesn't take anything away from you. But when you're working an 85-hour week, talk to me about that. Because how does the training fit into that schedule? And, you know, tell him that you're training as hard as you can for this fight. Or tell me <laughs> buddy, that. <laughs> buddy, 4 a.m. get-ups and 11 p.m. sleeping. Like, this is, I, I wake up, I run my dog, I go to work, I'm working my ass off at work as hard as I can. You know, basically picking shit up, putting it down, swinging hammers, climbing as much as I can. Um... Then, uh, then I get home and I go drive from my job site to a gym. Luckily, most of these gyms have showers, so I can shower myself off and train, train with the guys for an hour, hour and a half or two. And then I, and then I get home. I know, like, I have, I've never seen that guy at a grappling tournament. Okay. So I know my grappling is better than his. I just need to make sure that my conditioning is there and my striking is there. Okay. So to, to say I'm not training for this just because I'm working the hours I'm working. This is just the way I am. And this is, I'm going to show that the working man can beat the, the fashion model any day of the week. If you do turn this record around and, and you know, you're, you're currently on a two fight winning streak. If you go three, four five, maybe you'd turn the, the winning streak into something favorable. The record looks a little better. Do you put iron workers aside and, and make this a true run? Uh, possibly, possibly. We'll see. I'm not, uh, not willing to say yes or no on that for sure. Um, yeah, I think Ironwork and made me, made me the man I am and gave me the toughness that I have and gave me the, uh, the ability to, you know, if, if you're a hundred feet in the air and you got a four inch beam to walk, there's a piece inside of you that says, I don't know if I can do this. And that's yeah. exactly what a man feels before he gets in the cage. And anybody who says different is a liar. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Uh, and you you said there, you know, your opponent, uh, Cam or Dylan Schellenberg, he came in way overweight. You weighed in at one seventy eight. Yesterday, Jaden said something about. Um, he said something about how he's worried about Jaden missing weight. Jaden said he's never missed weight in his life. I know you've had a few weight issues, not necessarily issues, but you've had to shave your head. You had to do all that stuff to make the weight. Um, are you worried? Uh, are you personally worried about him missing weight or do you take this fight no matter what it's at? Taking this fight, no matter what he comes at. That's the answer of a fighter, right? <laughs> yeah. Like this, this fight, I asked for this fight and that's when they came back. Part of his interview was like, I don't know why he asked for this fight. And that's, it's, 
the reason why I want to is because I know that I will break him. And you watch. If, like, I, I, I will give him this. He has hands, and he fucking hits like a truck. And I'm, I'm not looking to get fucking knocked out. So, yes, he is a, he's a good, skilled power puncher, and he does have good striking. But I spent my 10 months in Thailand. I have a great clinch, and I guarantee you my clinch is better than his. And I've made it into a transitionable clinch of Greco-Roman. So that's the thing, is that if he wants to clinch and try and throw knees, then he's just going to get taken down. And that's exactly what I, I see. And when he, he fought Luis Guzman, like, it's the same thing, you know. He clinched up and started throwing right hands. That's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to shoot to the legs. I'm happy to get around to the back on the body lock. I've had my own fight. Uh, my, I believe it was my third professional fight um, where I just I loaded up on a right hand, got shot underneath, but he took my back and choked me. And, yeah, you know, it, it happens, and I think he's going to realize that quickly. You haven't been shy on social media about sort of stating the game plan. Like, you know he's a power striker. You say you're going to take him down. You say you're going to ground and pound him or, or submit him. Uh, you're very, very confident with this, correct? Very confident, yes. Um, yeah, Pancreation Man, it's a very top game. And, uh, you know, sprawl and brawl kind of kind of martial art. And... I've, like I say, I've never once seen him compete grappling. There's no belt system for Nogi, and you can sign up for any advanced thing ever. Like a any tournament, you can get an advanced uh, division. And I've never once seen him compete once. So he can say he's been grappling for 20 years. Buddy, what does it mean if you're not competing? And then this is the thing like to fight a guy who's one in five when you have the skill that you believe you do. Like that's like me signing up for the beginner nogi division and then running around telling everyone I'm the champ. Um, yeah, it's, it sounds like, as I said, you, you're not giving, you're giving away your game plan basically. Uh, so I don't need to ask you what you're going to do here. You've already stated that let's move away from the fight a little bit then and talk about that grappling because you do, you are training with Matt, at, Matt Kwan at on guard. Um, you competed at battle grappling, which I did commentary for Uh crazy f match you had there. I, I got to ask you about that because uh, I'll even move away completely from this battlefield fight because that wrist lock you got put in, uh, tell me how the wrist is feeling now be, or even the day after because holy crap, I was hurting myself just watching that. Well, Jordan made a mistake, man. Wrist locks aren't real. So that's, that's first and foremost. Um, you know, ankle locks and wrists. I mean, maybe ankle locks more than wrist locks, but wrist locks, man, if you're, if you're, at a high level, you should not be tapping the wrist locks. And uh, to me, it more looked like he was fishing for the figure four now that I watched the, the recording back. Um, but yeah, he made a mistake not going for the Kimura. But if you've trained with me, you know that Kimuras, Kimuras are kind of my, uh, my specialty. Um, I kind of just uh, giggle when I get put in them. I just give them the old straight arm and, and uh, pass their guard. So... Um, yeah, the uh, the game plan on Jordan's part was maybe a little flawed in that regard, but that wrist lock was it like it looked it looked real bad. Maybe I just got bendy wrists, but um, that that wasn't really uh, as close as it looked. If you watched the uh, the reel on my Instagram, my face is completely dull. I smile yeah. at Mac one and I giggle. Like <laughs> it's it's uh, it, it was comedic almost in a way. But nothing but love to Jordan Stutt when I say that, okay? Like hundred percent. Yeah, Jordan's a great guy. I really like him, and you, uh, he's a great competitor. You got the belt around your waist after that match. Um, I know talking on the on the broadcast, uh, the the owner of Battle Grappling, uh, she's like, I I'd love to do a rematch of this match just because there were some weird escapes in overtime. Like I I thought you escaped early and it carried on a little bit. He escaped. You had the the arm triangle. There was like some ifs ands or buts in that overtime round would you like to run that one back again um i'm down i'm down for anybody and uh you know if if that's something that they'd like to do uh, i'll do it but i think the result will be the same like you said 
I had the arm triangle. His his elbow was not past the crown of my my neck. Um, so and they stopped that. And then the ones where I got out, my my head was already on the mat. Therefore, my, my his elbow was past the crown. And their tenth planet and. You know, Nabil probably knows the rules best on on the uh, the EBI rules. And yeah. So, you know, he was he was calling bullshit. So, you know, there might be something there. I might be uneducated in the rule set. Um, but yeah, I'll I'll run it back with him any day, just just out of out of respect. And um, I uh, I love that crew, and it was an honor to compete against those guys. So fun, fun event too. I I, I had a blast commentating it. Uh, some pretty crappy submissions thrown up there for some of the ankle locks that we saw throughout the event. As you said, wrist lock and ankle locks aren't real, but uh, that yeah, some bad ones were thrown out there during that event. Um, talking about grappling before I let you go here then, uh, you've been known to dabble in grappling even during fight camps. Uh, do you ever get nervous going onto the competition mats like a week, two weeks out from a fight? Well, that probably won't be the case here since uh, I know... BCJJF got canceled, so there's no event in April, so you won't be able to compete before this event. Yeah, I might be looking to do ADCC Phoenix, depending on uh, how I am after this fight. Um, but uh, yeah, you know these these grappling tournaments that I that I enlist in, they're never one to two weeks out or three weeks out. Uh, my MMA always will come come first. Um, I just do jujitsu to get the competition vibes right. And when I compete against the top brown belts in the community or the advanced division has a lot of black belts and everything as well. So this is uh, this is just something I, I love to do. I love to compete and I love to push myself. And like I say, that to circle back to my battlefield fight, this is why I am going to beat this guy is because he does not want to test himself ever. He always just wants to take the easy fight, always wants the easy way out. And he was saying last in his interview there, we don't get paid by the hour. I don't care, buddy. I will take every 15 minutes in there because I love this game. And I don't care if you're looking for a way out and you want to give me my your neck. It's it's probably going to go 15 minutes and it'll be one of the worst beatings. Fair enough. Final question for you then. I know he stated this. Your answers here are stating, you know, you're going into this one acting like the bad guy. Uh, do, would you post fight handshake respectful or, or that's out the window for you as well? Uh, of course. Yeah. Um, you know, I hope, I hope that he's, uh, somewhat inclined to receive the lesson that, you know, this is just because your buddy made the UFC and he's a heavyweight, like it's much harder as a middleweight and the division is much deeper and, so I'm very happy that a BC guy made the UFC and I'm, I'm very pleased. Um, but yes, you cannot talk about the UFC when you're two and one and your opponent's records are like three and 38 as a pro. Okay. This is just not something that you do this. Like I've been in this game long enough. I've had how many fights sanctioned, like sanctioned fights. So this is, this is just ridiculous behavior and I'm more than willing to, shake his hand afterwards and I'm not going to carry any bad blood after this. Um, I just, I just really get annoyed with guys cause there's, and it's not just him. There's a lot of guys on the BFL roster that are getting put in positions where they get to fight these guys that are cans. They're, they're just cans. There's no easy way to say that. And I just don't believe in that one bit. The whole point I got into this sport is because I didn't believe that I could do these things. And just like ironworking, this is what I've come to learn is that you do hard things that you don't think that you can do. And Jaden is not something that I just think that I'm going to breeze through. This is, and this is, I'm training hard for this and I don't necessarily believe a hundred percent wholeheartedly that I'm just going to walk through this guy or just take him down or hold him down with ease. But that's the beauty of fighting, and that's why I got in this game to begin with. And that's that's what makes this sport beautiful. He is Christian Tremaine. He takes on Jaden Martin, May 9th, UFC Fight Pass, Battlefield Fight League 80. Christian, you have any other uh, sponsors, shout-outs, anybody you want to thank? The floor is yours, man. 
Yeah, big time. Um, so uh, the gyms I train at, On Guard, um, Pit Meadows Combat Club. Uh, we got Universal, Kazushi. You know, there's gyms that uh, really help me out. And then uh, I got a clothing sponsor, Ghost Grappling, and then my supplement sponsor, Popeyes Langley. And that's about it. Like I said to Jaden, I'm taking a back seat for this one, man. This is the fight that I'm looking forward to most on the Battlefield Fight League 80 card. So have fun in there, man. I expect fireworks out of this fight. Can't wait for it. Yeah, thanks for having me.